and welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors. Today I have a video for you that might help you identify a problem you have that you might not even know you have. I've seen many clarinetists lately who are playing on the wrong reed strength for their level and experience of playing. It's really easy to tell if your reed is too stiff or too strong because it can sound fuzzy and really hard to play. But many, many players may not be aware that they've outgrown their current reed strength. In a moment, I'll cut back into my studio instead of my lovely backyard here and give you some pointers on how you can pick the best reed strength for you. Now I have a couple other great reed care videos and recommendations for reed brands to use and I'm going to put links to those in the description right underneath this video. You'll also find a printable worksheet that goes along with this because some of my recommendations might be easier for you to see on paper. So you can also look for a link for that if you want to download it to your own computer and read it at home. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and I look forward to your comments. If you have any thoughts, you can write them into the comments box directly below. If you are considering trying out some different types of reed, it's also a good chance to perhaps look at the different strengths of reeds and you want to find out if you're using the strength that's best for you or if perhaps it's time to slightly change up your strength level. When you first began on the clarinet, you were probably playing what we would consider a fairly soft reed, and in size that would show up as a low number, like a two or perhaps a two and a half. And basically, if it's a low number, it means the very tip of the reed, right near the end here, which is the part that does most of the vibrating on the mouthpiece, is quite thin. It means it doesn't take a lot of energy to get it vibrating. So odds are, when you first began playing, you had kind of wimpy air and kind of wimpy mouth muscles. So you needed something that would respond fairly easily. However, I'm a huge believer in getting your air as fast and focused as you can, as quickly as you can. And most people who have a good understanding of this will be ready for a stronger read within weeks of the first time they play the clarinet you may be ready for a stronger read as well. So I want to give you some general guidelines on how to know what strength of read you should play, and that's something you can experiment with a little bit. Now, every mouthpiece, every mouth is different. So some mouthpieces like stiffer reads to sound good, some require softer reads. So I'll just give you some generalities, and I encourage you to figure out what works best for you. If your read is too soft, there are some clues that you can listen for in your playing. One of them is that when you try blowing, the sound comes out very easily. But if there's some downside to a reed that's too soft, you'll especially notice it when you move into the higher registers of the clarinet. You might find that your sound's a little bit loud, kind of squawky, a little obnoxious, maybe the pitch is quite flat. Now other things other than a soft reed could contribute to this, but it's just a signal, maybe an indicator that your reed might be soft. What I think is one of the strongest clues to a soft read is that as you're playing in the high register, which we call the clarion register, and you're moving up, the top notes there might not even sound at all. Instead of getting the note you're seeking, you might get this kind of low undertone. I'm going to give a demonstration of what this might sound like, and if you recognize this sound as something that happens in your own playing, it could be a good indication that your read is too soft. Here we go. So at the top, couldn't even get that high note to play. And that's a great note to test on the high C that we play with just our thumb and register key because it's such a sensitive note. So you'll notice my sound was a bit loud, a little bit obnoxious. And on top, instead of getting a high C, I got this kind of low undertone. Now other things can cause that. It's a sign that the note doesn't have enough support. I can definitely be focusing on my air support, and if you're getting that low sound, you probably aren't using your air quickly enough, and that would help it. But it could also be a really good indication that your reed is too soft. Other things you might find with a soft reed is that you tend to get little squeaks in the sound more often than you usually do, especially if you're tonguing in the high register. So those are just clues that you might have a stiffer reed, or you might have a reed that's too soft and you might be ready to go up to a stiffer reed. If you suspect that your reed might be a little soft, 
Here's a really good way for you to test it and find out. Earlier, when I was demonstrating trying to play up to the highest notes of the clarinet and it just kind of wimped out on me, which is a, a clue of a soft read, what you can do is this. This is just a way of testing your reed strength. You can take your reed, as you normally set it up on the mouthpiece, and deliberately place it too high on the mouthpiece. So you probably have a system for setting your reed up. It might be that the tip of the reed is even with the tip of the mouthpiece or that it even goes a little bit above the tip of the mouthpiece. What we're going to do is move it so it's about a millimeter high above the top of the mouthpiece. Now this might make it feel hard to play and really resistant. However, what we're gonna do is just test our top few notes, perhaps our high G with the register key and our three notes up to high C. That high C, just thumb and register key, is such a fussy note. If our reed's too soft, it often won't come out very easily. If you have your reed up too high, even if your sound's fuzzy, but that note suddenly comes out, that's a really clear indicator that likely a stiffer reed would benefit you. And uh, when you're actually in the right strength, it's not gonna sound as fuzzy and resistant as it would if we just artificially create that stiffness by moving our reed up. So let's pretend my reed's too soft. I'll get and demonstrate what that might sound like. So I just can't get that high C. I'm gonna take my reed, just gonna loosen my ligature, and I'm gonna move it up. Well, if you look in up close here, now my reed is above the mouthpiece, and that's, that's higher than is ideal for a reed. However, it's artificially making it stiffer. If I were just to try an open G, that might sound kind of fuzzy. It feels hard to blow. But if I try those high notes out, and all of a sudden that high C pops out, even if it's hard to blow, that's a pretty clear indicator I might need a stiffer reed. So I want you just to test that out at home and see what you think about it. I would recommend if any of these symptoms seem part of your playing that you try going a half strength higher which would make the reed a little more resistant and see how you feel. Now uh, when you first go to a stronger size reed you'll notice that it takes a little bit more air to get the sound out. In some cases if you're really ready to go up a size you'll put it on and you will instantly get better results. Your high notes will come out more easily, you'll sound great. And that's a sure clue that you were ready for a new strength. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to blow and you feel a little bit of resistance and it's up to you to gauge whether it's way too hard or just a little bit. If it's just a little bit too hard, sometimes it's worth trying that stiff reed for about 10 to 15 minutes because they do tend to soften up a little bit in that time period. If your reed is too stiff, in other words, if you've picked a size that's higher than you should for your level of playing, that's really easy to identify. When you blow, it will feel very resistant. It will feel like you're working very hard and your tone will be very, um, you'll hear a lot of airy hiss and fuzz, sort of like this. Now that one's a little bit stiff. I'm gonna make my read like super duper extra stiff just so that through the computer, you can hear a real clear difference between a read that's pretty good and a read that's definitely too stiff. So I could hardly play that. You heard a lot of hiss and air sound there. So that would be a read that's too stiff for me. What I really encourage you to do is always be experimenting with reed strengths because if you have a reed that's too soft, you're not gonna get as full a warm a tone as you like and you're gonna find your high notes are hard to play. If you play on a reed that's too stiff, you're gonna have that airy fuzzy sound and you're gonna tire your muscles out more quickly. So there is a balance there, but many people aren't even aware of sort of where they should be. So experimenting is worthwhile. I'll give you some general guidelines on where, when I think people need different read strengths. And again, your own equipment may change this one way or another, but just to give you a loose guideline, when you're a total beginner, I like people to start on about a two and a half. Now that's stiffer than some people start on, but I think most people can produce enough airspeed to play in a two and a half right away. As soon as you start playing into the high register using your register key, for sure you want a two and a half. So if you're on a two and you're trying to play high register notes, my guess is you'll find it easier with a two and a half. 
when you start going above about high G, this G that has our thumb register key and first three fingers, I think a three definitely makes it easier to play. So again, depending on your equipment, but that's kind of my general guideline. So as soon as you're in the high register, at least two and a half, as soon as you're going above high G, probably a three is going to be easier. And then most people over time go to gradually stronger strengths until they reach a point where they level off. It's, it's strong enough for them to use really good air support and nice embouchure support and get the sound that they want. Uh, that can vary from person to person, but generally it's between a three and a half and a four. Some people will fall outside of that, again, depending on their gear and how they play. But for most people, that's about the leveling off point. I recommend you do take some time to experiment with this. And I would actually love to hear from you how this goes for you. You'll see there's a comments box right underneath this video. And I try and check in with that about twice a week. If you have questions about reads or anything on this video, go ahead and write it in there and I'll make sure I get to your comments in the next week or two. Hey, it's Michelle again with one final word. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I also want to invite you to join my Clarinet Mentors community. It's absolutely free. If you're not already a member, please sign up at www.learnclarinetnow.com. If you sign up, you'll get a newsletter from me every two or three weeks with an educational video like the one you just watched. I also put in there any links to special clarinet events I know about. I'm going to be hosting some incredible clarinet interviews with some of the world's greatest players and I want to invite you to them. And if I have any special clarinet products or things that I like and recommend, I'll make sure that I let you know about them. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.